Hi, so I promised you a video about personalities and the basis of personality traits which is validated through thousands of uh, scientific reports there is no question about that the five factor model uh, or the personality trait uh, test that known as big five is one of the most valid tests out there to explain how humans actually work mentally in in a social environment that the social game is that we live in since we are social animals but to uh, to explain the difficulty about personalities and how complex it really is you need to understand that you live in a three-dimensional world that you don't completely understand how that even works imagine your personality it's five dimensions it's extroversion agreeableness conscientiousness neuroticism and openness being the last five finger on my hand <laughs> if you combine these these personality traits the five and and sort of sort them in being high middle and low you have three different options for each trait when you do the test it's a number between one and a hundred that you can be in it so but if we sort of talk about the normal di distribution curve which looks sort of like this if you have 100 people that makes the test they are going to end up on on a curve like this and on the bump that's 80 percent of all 80 people of the 100 that are going to fall in the normal region of that trait so when you look at each trait you are either high in the low snippet in the highness or your middle normal or you're in the low region which you are in the other dimension where there can be problems and yes there are problems to each trait uh, can you understand them yourself probably if you read a lot about it but I would suggest if you do the test which is free online if you search for it uh, you should probably see a psychiatrist as well if you haven't been to one so far why well if you are in fact mentally ill or have a mental problem you would probably not know it a good example of that is uh, having a gut feeling about uh, another person there are uh, discussions about how you describe how you feel if you have if you've met a, a, a narcissist or a psychopath you will get a bad, very bad gut feeling because that person will not perceive the world as you do well here's the problem let's say you're high in neuroticism which is connected to your pain circuit in your brain that actually is feeling pain or anticipating pain and to be extra clear about neuroticism if you're high in that I can describe that each trait is divided into into six subcategories so if you look at the possibilities of different combinations of personality each of the five has six subcategories and for, for neuroticism you have anxiety anger depression self-consciousness immoderation and vulnerability and you can actually be a narcissist a vulnerable narcissist that's one that are high neuroticism and high in vulnerability and feels that they are entitled to being right all the time never sees themselves as the problem they never seek help they always do the bad thing out of two choices the research being done on that as well that I found out that if 
you are in fact n neurotic and furthermore if you're even a narcissist you'll always do the bad thing which means um, if you're in a relationship and you're the neurotic one you're the one feeling pain all the time feeling angry irritated anxious uh, vulnerable and that has shown that you also feel dissatisfied with a marriage or a relationship much quicker so from a therapeutical standpoint that's going to be a problem for you when trying to have a relationship neuroticism neurotic people have also been proven to um, have on and off relationships uh, they have children with more than one partner probably two or three uh, because they can't they can't interact they can't stay in one one relationship and feel happy about that uh, so they need to jump to another relationship and there's a problem with that behavior as well and when you when you look further into the science when you talk about vulnerable narcissists they always tend to sit at home by themselves justifying that they are right and what they're entitled to you probably met a lot of them but it's not always that you see who they are in the work environment because everyone has a facade when they come to work uh, you don't you, you don't always see who they are until you actually live with them and then that pops out or if in fact they are honest about themselves which rarely people are not it's a survival mechanism so you won't spot if they are a vulnerable narcissist but there are plenty of them and here's another problem uh, there was a research done on uh, the five traits on 20 different countries and what it showed was done in Sweden and what it shows is that equal con uh, countries with, with high degree of equality like Scandinavian countries Norway Finland Sweden women are actually twice as high in eroticism than the rest of the world uh, that means that women in Sweden, due to probably equality, not proven, still discussed and debated, but it looks like it, that sw women in Sweden, Norway and Finland actually feel pain more, more than you know, the countries that are not as equal. Which means that you also, prob the probability of having more vulnerable narcissists in Scandinavian countries are way higher than the rest of the world. And that is a problem because they will have, they will have a problem sustaining a normal relationship that's of a longer character. They will jump and be on and off all the time and, and argue a lot. But jumping back to the memes where people argue that, well, you should trust your gut feeling. Well, here's the problem. If you are an erotic, let's say in Sweden, a woman, the probability of you feeling a bad gut feeling in plenty of relationships is very high, according to science. So that doesn't mean that the partner or the person you're trying to have a relationship with, whether it's intimate or not intimate, will, will be the problem. Because it's not that person's problem, probably. It might actually be you as a woman, because we know that women are high in Scandinavian countries and the narcissistic trait is connected to the neuroticism trait that's unfortunate it's not to blame women for it rather to understand that there is a problem and talking to a psychiatrist and dealing with it the good thing about personalities that we know of and that the data shows it's that it's fluid so you can work on yourself and a good way to do that is through cognitive behavioral therapy in combination with ordinary therapy to dig up bad things but to describe the problem with just neuroticism which for me is one of the most interesting parts of the personality is that neuroticism also have the different problems like anger you conceive someone who has a neurotic trait through if they get angry pretty quickly and long longer and they stick to the anger feeling like i said before in the previous youtube video about emotions is that if it lingers and you loop in your feeling you'll have a problem in how you see and perceive the world basically because if you're stuck in a feeling you're blocking your brain to accessing 
other memories and feelings that actually can give you an objective view of the person or the world. But if you're angry all the time, you'll only get access to memories that enhances your anger, which makes your memory a uh, light bulb memory, which is in fact fake after three years. We know that through th science as well, that 90% of your light bulb memory, for, for example, what did you remember and, and what can you recall about 9-11? They actually made a test about that. So they made the students write about their memories about the incident of 9-11 the same day or the day after. And <clears throat> they saved those uh, papers. And after three years, they had to describe the same day again. And the funny thing is that everyone believes what they remember three years afterwards. But in fact, 90% of what they wrote three years after was incorrect. They did, however, recognize their own handwriting and could say that, yeah, I wrote that, but that's not what happened, when in fact, that was what happened. And that is called light bulb memory that's connected to your emotional part. And the problem is that when you, when you put your, make a memory in your brain, you're actually putting snippets of information about what happened and your brain will make a coherent map of it. And if you're in, in, under the influence of an emotion at the same time, panic, afraid, angry, whatever, de depressed, that memory will be very much skewed and not accurate at all. And think about this. If you are a neurotic starting at a young age, how, would you, how will you perceive the world 20 years after that if you haven't seeked help? dealing with neuroticism. Think about how many memories are put in your brain or that person's brain each time they had an episode of anger, anxiousness, depression, jealousy, because jealousy is in, within the neuro neuroticism trait. There's a load of memories that are not even close to any whatsoever truth. And that person believes that. So coming back to the gut feeling about another person, when they are in fact afraid, neuroticism, neurotic people do get PTSD and borderline bipolar disorder, has nothing to do with ADHD. Uh, you can see how this aggregates into a huge problem. And when that per person then starts looking for narcissists in their own vicinity because they're always afraid or psychopaths when they try to look for a relationship, they won't be very successful. And the sad, sad part about being a neurotic, if you're high in that trait, is that we have proven through science that you actually die quicker uh, if you're high in that. Um, through cancer and through uh, something called the European heart condition because the emotions goes for your heart and slowly increases your heart pressure and all that. However, the effect is alleviated somewhat if you are a person that are, is physically active. That means cardio, running, uh, strength training. And I, some people actually feel that they feel better when they do exercise, which they do. It's, it's also proven through science that it helps you. So those people that figure out that are high in neuroticism, that do train, will actually benefit a great deal. But if you're looking for a good way of, or a good personality, you would probably not want to be high in neuroticism or being, be a neurotic, uh, because it's actually bad for you. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. When it comes to the other traits, uh, people, extroversion, for example. Extroversion is what people are looking for throughout life. Introverts look towards extroverted people because extroverted people are much happier and they also live longer. And here's why. It's due to dopamine. The extroversion trait actually is connected to the positive 
circuit in your brain, feeling happy or anticipating happiness. A good example is you go and book a vacation or plan for a vacation that kicks in the dopamine circuit and that actually makes you happy. You go on the vacation and you have the vacation and you feel happy when you're in it. But when you remember it coming home again, the effect is gone. You don't get the kick and rush anymore. So there's a lot of people in, for example, Scandinavia that needs to have a vacation each year to actually feel happy and to get out of the neuroticism trait, which is a good thing but uh, financially it might be a bad thing and in the long run it doesn't alleviate your personal personality trait if you would put those thousands of dollars into a shrink or managing yourself or making changing trying to change your personality you will get more bang for the buck so to speak Here's a fun fact. An extroverted person should not be in a relationship with an introvert person because there are, they both will feel that one is way too happy, one is way too depressed. And when it comes to sex, an extroverted person actually wants more and needs more sex than an introverted person. That's why you can see that people with tattoos, for example, the size of the tattoo is also connected to the extroverted trait. And they are more risk-taking than non-tattooed people. Uh, they are more promiscuous in that regard. They do have more partners than sexual partners than non-tattooed people. Um, but when we talk about body transformation, uh, then those people actually sleep better than ordinary people. And they also... Um, have a higher self-confidence level than ordinary people. So when you think about, you think you know how people are, when I give you the examples of the science that I just spoke of, which I've read about in scientific papers uh, that has been thoroughly reviewed or peer-reviewed by other experts, which is much better than gossip papers, because there are actually some truth to it, um, but most of all, what I'm trying to say is that people are way complicated. Much more complicated than you can ever understand with your own psyche. And we don't actually know, we do know which type of personalities are good, good for your health, good for others. There is a baseline of emotional stability that you need to, to have because it's not good to be way too high in extroversion the there are two types of narcissists there are an extroverted narcissist which is called grandiose and so if you're way high in in um, narci uh, in extroversion you can also risk to be a nar narcissist grandiose narcissist but it's quite easy to spot those because they are politicians they are actors they like to talk and take control uh, in a social gathering, for example. Uh, Donald Trump, you know him, is a good example of that. Uh, but then there's the other one, the other type of narcissist that uh, most people do not see or acknowledge because they are actually hard to spot. They're called vulnerable narcissists. And the vulnerable narcissist is connected to neuroticism. So... Since we have in Scandinavia more women that are much higher in eroticism, the probability of having more vulnerable narcissists in Sweden that are female, when we're talking about the normal distribution, the probability of finding one here is pretty high. How do you see one? Well, you don't. You actually need to um, be in a relationship with them and see how they act at home because they are very secluded. They they don't have much, many friends. Uh, for a reason, they have a social inadequacy. They can't function very well with other people socially. And they can blame it on uh, plenty of things, but in the end, they will sit at home, feel that they are entitled to being right, which they are not, usually, and everyone else is wrong. But it's still a problem because they are neurotic. Um, 
And those are also people that usually seek help from, not proven, this is pure speculation, that have a large number of uh, friends on Facebook, above 500, LinkedIn, probably a lot more than 500, which they don't even know. Because you need to ask yourself, when it comes to social media and social platforms like YouTube, uh, Facebook, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, for example, how are these people using these platforms? Is it to get attention? For example, if you don't have any education, you're not selling yourself or a service, you have a, a job. Why do you have more than 500 followers uh, or friends on, on a platform that you don't even know? Uh, are you looking for for uh, someone to uh, to uh, acknowledge that you exist, uh, to give you some sort of appreciation to exist? Why are you on these platforms and why have you so many friends? What is it all about? If you're a consultant selling services, of course you're going to have a lot because you're going to make your living through it. It's called marketing. But if you're not selling a service, that is a good way of spotting if someone has a problem. Because needing that much attention from so many people and thinking that, oh look, I have so many people that I know, which you don't know, is a good example of having a problem with yourself. Uh, you should not seek that type of social interaction because it's not social interaction. You can find that on Netflix about social platforms and the problems of polarization on them and why it's a bad thing basically to to think that that's your social gathering on the web when in fact in person is much better because then you can see the person and not see the facade that is in front of you in form of a interface but that's about personalities i hope that has been uh, valued in some sort of way and that you understand how complex it actually is with personalities and humans uh, it's not that easy to understand and you need to read hours upon hours upon hours of research to even get a grasp of how complicated it all is and to understand that you don't know you can't judge someone else you can see some sort of troubles but it's very very much more complex than that but what we can say is that don't be high in eroticism that is not good for you not at all that's all I have to say. Cheers. I'll see what I can find to talk about in the next episode. Um, since I love psychology. See you later.